holds a big school of them, biggest school of them. I'm looking at the biggest muddy. That's tea, Boris. You know, like the traveling part of it's good, but it's what you get up to. That's where it's at. Can I get them both? No, one's chasing the other one. Oh, right in the shallows. They were like in ankle deep water. This year is going to be something else. Right. So, a couple of years back, went down south uh, to Megan at um, Wine and Bar, and we made a platform for the swag. So, one thing I miss is my rooftop tent, but I had a solution for it because I didn't want to go uh, a camper trail with a bed of swag and a rooftop tent. So, now the swag gets used for everything, including turning it into the rooftop tent. What we did do though was made the platform and at that stage I thought the best idea would be have it so I can remove it. So that didn't turn out so good because <laughs> I didn't like after a while having to take it on and off. You know, you think, oh, it's any easy, but that one job might be easy, but it's every other job you've got to do too. So you try and easier one job, I guess. You know, you try and make that one job easiest it can be as well. What I'm doing now, and also what I found out, what I did is put three mil flat on there because I was thinking I'll put my legs up this end where the mesh is. I didn't know if it was going to be comfortable or not, but turns out, if you remember when I went in the NT, I ripped out this um, flat because it, it added up. It weighed quite a bit, more than I thought. But um, that worked, but it was just the weight. And then I end up ripping, so I end up taking that flat plate off. Um, and then, if you remember, I just put like them straps, them um, NZ strap things, and I wrapped around several times, and I put the swag on that. And I actually had my head up the other end on the mesh side, um, where I thought originally it'd be too uncomfortable, but, but it really wasn't. And I thought, if worse comes to worse, I'll just get them hiking mats and lay them down underneath the swag. That'll, or even the insulation, the foam insulation, and hey, that might take a bit of heat away from the bottom of the swag, or in winter, you know, make it warmer, who knows? But um, I've actually found a local fella, I've been put onto a fella in Home Hill, so I went out and I seen him and told him, you know, it's hard to explain on the phone, so it was brilliant. I got to go out and see him and just explain him what I want to do and that, and he's gonna make it happen for me. I'll jump up and I'll show you what I mean. So what we're doing now is the floor of this platform that was at the back with the flat alley is now gonna be the same as this, this mesh stuff. Why? Because it's a shitload lot lighter and like I was just saying, it's still comfortable to sleep on. And instead of it being taken on and off, I'm chopping it shorter. I'm doing as much as I can um, to make it easier for old mate. But I'm going to chop it all shorter and then he's going to, um, yeah, remake it. Just put a section right down the centre there. And then I'll have little box sections on the side with another box section that slides in and out because now I've got to make it the same size as this because it's going to be hinged. Nothing can come out here because I've got the quad that takes up this gap. So now that's going to be shortened and that'll hinge back onto itself just like that. So I probably won't be able to lift it, but yeah, it'll be like that. And I'll probably go a um, uh, piano hinge or something, big Stano piano hinge or them bullet ones, I'm not sure yet. I might go the piano hinge, that might work a bit better doesn't stick up as high and then when it's folded over I'll have them little box sections that'll just slide out and sit on this back rack and get cutting gotta have that done because I go in tomorrow I hope I cut it in the right places. They say measure twice, cut once. So I measure about 20 times and still got to trim 20 times. <laughs> all right, she's all cut. Hopefully it lines up for him. <laughs> so we got a couple of hours to go until we have to um, shoot over to uh, Home Hill and get this rack done. So I've been getting some more jobs done. Welcome to the cab cam too. I'm pretty stoked with that. <laughs> Ever since a kid I've had a bit of a, a fetish for hats better than other things I guess <laughs> but um and I still don't mind them obviously I can't collect as much but I still get some but I had, I wanted to make up something where they could hang but I usually have one for 
around the yard and if I decide to go out I, I put a clean one on. <laughs> but pretty simple, all what I did was take out the um, little whatchamacorts and little plastic clips for the um, roof liner um, and then I just put a rivet nut in there and then I just had a like a nice uh, screw that would go inside. I put a bit of um, rubber from a, um, what do you call it, like your little hex head screws that have the rubbers on them, like roofing screws. So it acts like a bit of a spring. And then just a bit of alley. So when it's in, I can tighten them up. It shouldn't come loose the way it is because the hat won't, shouldn't allow it to spin around as well. But yeah, we'll see how I go. I can tighten it up a bit tighter. But I put that in there for a bit of a spring washer for the screw to help it stay tight and then just yeah you can this is just a bit of alley you can pull down and clip your hat onto like anything you know I'll, when i drive i'll find out how it sits and that it doesn't affect my head for those who are wondering um but yeah a bit of a trial and error it's just a good spot to put them they just clip up like so and they can't come off most of my caps that i do get um oh, what's g4 um, she's our, our mum down in our Daringa, I think she is, just I think it's, uh, just in from Rocky, I think they're pretty much in line town would be. Been through there a few times. Uh, my mum used to work down there, so I've been out there a bit. Um, but yeah, she just has her own little hat business, and I love the, the trucker caps because they they fit good, they stay on my head. But yeah, I pretty chuffed about that. Just them little jobs again <laughs> oh and the seat covers how's that um well, i think it's 140 bucks or something off ebay delivered so they're not like you know they're not thick but they're not thin neither and it's better than what i had on there because i had nothing actually just just this part had had a cover on it so i just noticed the seats be getting dirty and i had a big hole in my my seat so i jammed a bit of foam in there and i thought i've got to get seat covers to hold that foam in there Feels like a new seat now. Bought one. But yeah. So, I finally got around to putting a vent in this thing. It's never really been a big issue for me because um, I just, it, it gets warm, but it's never felt real hot. But now I'm adding to the electric, so I'm getting more gear in here. I've got camera gear in here that I charge while I'm driving. So I just, I want it to be a bit more cooler inside. And also it helps the, the freezer out, or fridge out, whatever I've got it running on. Um, by having a bit more cooler air in here and it can circulate. Yeah, gone and just got one of them alley. It's got a little bit of foam here, you know, for dust and that. It'll do its best. I'm sure it's still going to let some dust in, but um, should be right. If I hit real dusty roads, I'll just make something to slide in there to stop it all together. Um, but yeah, then around here, that's it from the outside. Um, what brand is it? Aussie 4x4. So it's all alley. I've got it's all raw ones, it goes with the rest. But yeah, it, the way it seals off, it looks pretty good. Like, as long as no water goes in there, but the way it's built, like I said, on the inside, it seems pretty well. Hopefully all the water will run out the bottom here. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that's gonna make a, a fair bit of a difference, that. And all that I had to do was um, move the travel body, because that was over here. Well, there's no good having it there when you've got cool air coming, or air going in, but you don't want to heat it up any more than what it has to be if I am running it. Even though they don't get that hot on the outside, it's still, you know, you've got cool air running straight around that. And not only that, it was right up here. So it was going to stop a lot of airflow too. So that was pretty simple. I just moved that over. At least now there'd be a bit of oxygen circling around inside here. And... One, like I say, I always recommend guys, just insulation doesn't look the neatest, but you'll be surprised how much of a difference it makes. But she's coming along. Oh, I'm getting keen. All right, final piece of the puzzle. We end up going to old mate, Jason. I got put onto him by someone that just randomly mentioned him, so I obviously jumped on and had a look, so I put a little picture up there, but good good bunch too to have a chat with and it's a small world eh like um his partner's mum worked with my grandma <laughs> a long long time ago at a place called hazelton so uh, they were a good crew and, and it's always good because they're into the same thing too so it was made it easy to explain what did i want to done in that you know so now my um rooftop swag rack is complete fitted done and that's pretty much the last major thing i had to do to um yeah before I could hit the road. 
Uh, it's all alley. Like I said before, I had it done. I had it so I could um, uh, take it on and off, but found out it wasn't ideal because I didn't need it on and off. So I've gone and hinged it this time. So a lot less weight and I used to run with, um, you know, like a, a um, bed for me swag underneath and this here is probably equivalent to the bed. So I haven't gained any weight and haven't lost any weight with it. But the good thing is, is yeah, I've taken weight off and uh, now this is just so much better. <laughs> so yeah, all I've done is, um, so for here, I've got to get me a, uh, another, what do you call it? Like a proper pin for it, but I've just got a split washer in here for now. Pull him out. Just use two stainless steel bolts. <laughs> uh, drilled a hole in the end of it. Very simple. I didn't want it flash. It just had to work. I just slide out and just slide that back in. Just when I'm pulled up, it just stops it from wanting to, you know, slide back in. So I don't jump up here and it goes. <laughs> got one of them on each end. Like I said very, very simple design. That's that's all I need. When I am up top, I don't really feel it through the through the mattress of the swag. But I've had an idea. I um I am going to get insulation. I've got the spare insulation there, so I'm just going to cut out a s section the size of this, and most likely. If I can roll it up tight enough, it's any light stuff, but it might make a difference and it might be good for winter and summer camping with insulation. But I'm going to take the mattress out of the swag, put the insulation down, and the mattress up top, see how it go. That's an idea. But um, yeah, that'll give that extra bit of padding, but I really don't think I'm going to need it. So what I'm going to do is I'm heading south first and I'm coming north. I'm going to head south, roll with it just normally, and if it it is, you know, I'll, if I do think, oh, I need that insulation, then on the way back through, I'll get it then. But, right, I'm stoked with that. I put a piano hinge all the way across. Um, also, or stainless rivets. Uh, also put a bit of 3mm alley angle on each of the corners. I feel, especially this corner, most of the weight when I get up is on this side. So that's just to help it out a bit. The only thing I really got to do now is um, figure out a good way to uh, touch it at the front. And I reckon I'll end up putting a bit of foam or something, a bit of rubber. So when I do attach it, she's not uh, alley on alley and vibrating, but I'll try and attach it so it's got no movement. I'd rather leave it the way it is, strap it down and think about it properly before I make any rash decisions. <laughs> yeah, I'll think, oh, which side am I going to have my head up? Am I going to have my head up this end? We'll have it up that end. I don't know, but chances are I'll have it up this end because then, I don't know. It's just good. You can jump up in here and swing around and lay down. How good. <laughs> what a view. I can feel someone looking at me. Someone's getting keen to go. Hey, Dodge. Yeah, righty -o. Shh. Wake up the whole neighbourhood. Bloody beautiful. Cheers guys. Thank you very much. I cannot wait to be sitting at a beach and just looking over the water from a rooftop swag. So just a heads up too, that um last episode you would have seen and I was using that frostphoric acid with the alcohol for the uh the rust sort of converter stuff. It did react the way it did because I did spray it on galvanized parts and because there was tectile on it, because I actually did what I said I was going to do, made a batch up, went and did that tow bar, and it come up pristine. Almost like I didn't even need to paint it, but it come up really good. So the stuff proved itself. So I think I'll be getting more of it and keeping it on board and mixing it up when I need it. It just helps out a bit, especially on surface rust and stuff like that. It, it really did take out a lot of like hard labor. Obviously you got to get off the loose stuff and and crap like that but just to spray that on that tow bar where there's no loose stuff i just gave it a hose off gurney and then sprayed it on it just unbelievable how it come up so might be worth looking into it if you wanted to go this way so yeah phosphoric acid and that ethyl alcohol and so i mixed it up like old mate 60 percent uh concentrate so works a charm cheers again old mate so um in um last week's video i did i actually did record parts of it about putting um rubber mat on the bottom of the jerry can where the bolts come through so it doesn't rub through but i i actually didn't show it in that video because the amount of stuff i talk about if i was to show everything in a video that video would never end 
So um, I didn't actually put that in, but um, yeah, someone did mention it. So cheers for the old timer advice. Appreciate the input, man. Um, yeah, I, I definitely was putting something on there, but what I do like is I liked your idea about the old chopping board. I know this is any thin rubber, but it'll see this trip through. Um, but I reckon uh, for the future, I reckon I will end up doing that with the chopping board stuff, putting it in there and I'll just countersink the bottom of the chopping board so the bolts slip up in it but still make sure it's yay thick above the bolts above the bolts so and I'm um, yeah sick of that in there but that was a, a really good idea I'm kind of going easy on the trailer and saying that I've just done a shitload to it but it's it's a trailer where I just only when I'm back do I use it so when I go away I actually leave it unregistered and um yeah so I don't not paying for an extra trailer uh, and I didn't think I'd be back for a while. So um, I ended up going down and getting new number plates for it. So I've got to say too, I like the idea. I see people put rubber and that on there. But when I got this boat trailer, it was already like this. So this is how he did it. So I just did it the same way. A couple of Stano rings and B shackles. And yeah, she can just flap in the wind. <laughs> you know, if you're going, especially going down embankments and stuff like that, going down creek beds and just flap up or water. Especially the front bull bar ones, you know, water's good for lifting it up. But all fitted, brand new too. Woohoo! So they're all fitted and she's ready to rock and roll. But yeah, so that's why I just go half ass, I guess, on some things. But it's still gonna work. And yes, they do come close. Uh, there was another couple of comments. One side does, one side doesn't. Obviously, because the boat's not um, right in the center. And I don't wanna go off that neither because I know the boat can move a bit but what I found out is I can get some of that boat skid stuff that blue stuff or whatnot and sit it in between it and the only reason why it gets close is because the, obviously the jerry can holders are a lot wider than jerry cans so for now I'm just going to strip them to the outside but I ain't going to get some I'll think of a like you know I haven't done it yet because I want to just keep thinking so for now strapping it to the side I'm not hitting any rough roads for a little bit yet but that'll give me a, a good idea and I am heading down to an uncle's place so either way is full of good ideas too so um, I'll leave that for now and then I will put skids on the insides of um, of the actual jerry can it's holder itself too so if the boat does rub up against it obviously it's on a skid I always had that in mind as well but like I said, for now, this trailer is only getting this boat from A to B, and then I got the little trailer in there to actually launch it. From little things, big things grow. So I ain't getting there, but cheers for the heads up, guys. Appreciate the advice. I love advice, just not smart ass advice. There is a difference, I guess, and that's the way the world's going, isn't it? So anyone's got advice, yeah, please drop a comment. You know, um, we don't learn if we don't, yeah, get shown or whatnot, or different ways, or something we might miss out on, but. I do think about it a lot and I probably don't put every detail in the video but like I said if I did, if I put everything in the video that was going through my head and the stuff that I talk about and, and think about, the videos would be hours long and probably boring as. <laughs> Alright then.